Hello and welcome to another episode of Johnny's Journal. Um, just going to get straight in there. Um, you've probably seen by the title that I'm here to defend social a little bit today. So, um, you know, it's not been the best week at all um, with the senior team. And yeah, social has made a few mistakes. But I think the way it's been blown up um, in the press and on Twitter, I just think it's a little bit uncalled for, just in my opinion. Um, we know Solskjaer is not the most um, qualified manager, we know he's not the most experienced with the, with the best CV, we know all that. We knew that going into the season and we knew that when we hired him. But the, the mistakes he's making aren't really the end of the world in my opinion. There's a lot bigger things going on at the club or that, that some of them are quite easy to um, rectify. So if you just have a look at the things that he has already achieved um, so far, just so we can kind of see that he's actually going in the right direction, but he just can't do everything too quickly. Um, so, there's a few complaints about the subs bench um, with the game against Wolves away on Monday night. So, okay, the subs bench wasn't the best, but two things. One, you guys have got many options anyway. And two, if the biggest gripe about that game was who... So I could put on the bench, then it's not really the end of the world. I think the starting eleven was probably um, the best starting eleven he could have got at, uh, at that time. Um, okay, Gomez for Lingard, that's a possibility. Uh, Greenwood uh, on right on the right wing, possibility instead of James. But I can I can see why he went for Lingard and uh, James instead. So James um, didn't start the first game against Chelsea. But he came on and scored. Um, so why wouldn't you consider starting him um, against Wolves? You know, he's done everything. He's done everything right. He's, he's getting there. If we had played um, somebody else instead of James, then people could have quite easily said, "Well, James had a decent pre-season. He scored against Chelsea. Why not give him a chance?" So I think he's in a no-win situation there. Um, and playing Lingard, okay, he's not. He's not had the best pre-season and he's not scored the most or assisted the most this year. Mm. And he's had a bad couple of games, I appreciate that. However, there's only one person really that you can play ahead of him and that's Gomez. And Gomez isn't even making the bench at the moment. So, I do agree Gomez deserves his chance now. And when I say a chance, it's, that's more than just one game. Because it's going to take more than one game to actually settle into the team. <laughs> so, regarding the... Uh, the selection of the first 11 against Wolves. Um, I think he actually went into that game um, with a good a good mentality. You know, some managers in the past have thought, well, let's look at our opposition and see how we can play against them. I think Solskjaer has done a bit of what Ferguson used to do and just put his first 11 out um, and said, right, we, you know, we're going to go for you. I appreciate Wolves' in midfield is better than our midfield, but I think player for player, we probably had like eight or nine better players than them, player for player, you know, like, you know, position for, for versus position. So, at the end, you know, so I can understand his lineup. <coughs> As for the bench, yes, um, we didn't really have many options to bring anybody on. However, um, the squad depth isn't there, we know that. So, I think the only other options would have been to put Chong or Gomez on the bench. Um, and I think them pair will get their chances sooner rather than later, probably. Um, but he is going to put uh, Matic and Matic on the bench, isn't he? Because, you know, he's already dropped them uh, from the first 11. They've been paid a lot of money, and I'm sure they will be more than happy. So he's probably thinking about unrest at the club. You know, Chong and Gomez will probably, probably be happy playing in cup matches and just coming on every now and again. So he's probably thinking to himself, look, I've already dropped these pair. He's dropped um, Spalding and Jones as well. So, he's probably thinking to himself, I can at least put their pair on the bench. <coughs> but, that you know, that is something that he will need to rectify going forward or else the fans will get on his back even more. Um, yes, yeah, so a mistake that he did make in the Wolves match. He could have um, brought substitutions on sooner. Yeah, I agree with that, absolutely. You know, um, I think he made two subs, like one was about 80 minutes gone and Greenwood with about four minutes to go, something like that. Yeah, I can understand um, 
fans getting on his back a bit there. But, you know, is it really the end of the world? Probably not. Um, I just think that the people who are jumping on Solskjaer are probably, their expectations are a bit too high. A bit, a bit too high for the club, a bit too high for him, a bit too high for the players. You know, we've got into this game, got into this season, knowing that McTominay's not going to be playing brilliantly. I think McTominay's probably had about 10 good games for us uh, at the senior level in a proper game, not, not including pre-season, with his whole career. Um, and now he's had a bad game against Wolves and a uh, bad game against Chelsea as well. Not a bad game, but below average, let's say. We know Pogba's going to be inconsistent. You know, we know we've got no white right winger and we know we've got no um, no proper <laughs> central attacking midfielder. Um, and then that, the penalty incident against Wolves. So, everyone's saying, oh, it's all Solskjaer's fault, you know, um, he should have decided on a penalty taker. Okay, so maybe that's the case. So, I think in his press conference he said there's two penalty takers, Pogba and Rashford. Rashford took the last one, Pogba's going to take this one, Pogba won it. I've got no problem if Pogba took the penalty. You know, that's, that's their choice. But again, is it really such a big deal, the fact that they didn't have a nominated penalty taker? Well, they had two nominated penalty takers. Again, I just think that the hype around it all is far too big. And if, if, Pogba, did, if Pogba did score that penalty, then this conversation wouldn't even be happening. Funnily enough, Rashford took the next penalty against Christophe Palace, which I'll talk about later in a different video, uh, and he missed. So, you know, misses are going to happen. So I think, okay, so I can see why the fans are a little bit annoyed. We should have a nominated pounce taker, but we had two nominated pounce takers, both capable of scoring. Um, both took penalties previously. Um, you know, Pogba was a pounce taker last season. Rashford's took the penalties against PSG and uh, I think uh, Chelsea was it? Uh, and they both took penalties in pre-season. I don't think there's any issue who took that penalty. I think it's just the fact that Pogba took it and he missed. And then people say, oh, why did Rashford take it? Um, but yeah, going back to the point, I can, I can see why. Um, we should have a nominated penalty taker, but I just don't think it's the end of the world. You know, everyone jumped on it as if it was such a big deal. So, all in all, yeah, people are jumping on him all over Twitter, um, saying, well, not all of them, but there's a lot of people still saying Solskjaer about now. And I just can't, I can't see Solskjaer leaving at all. I think the board back him too much, and uh, I think the board will take it as far as they can possibly take it. You know, even if we go to Christmas um, outside of the top eight, <laughs> I still think his job's still safe, because it's a work in progress. And what more can Solskjaer do at the moment? If you might have been just making the odd sub or a, a bit sooner or you know he's, he's got no creative midfielder in there so yes he'll have to play Gomez soon no problem but it's, it's a th three games have gone and he decided to play Lingard there first so what you know you play you you know if he if he believes in Lingard then yeah you give him three games he's given three games he might end up giving him four games have the international break and then he might mix it up a little bit but at least give people the opportunity to play at the best or at least give people the opportunity this season to you know get some sort of system or something together I just think that people are too quick to jump on everything and analyse everything so quickly and there's just, there's just no need for you just yet um, like I said there's no surprises if anything there's some, been some pleasant surprises you know James has done better than we, we probably expected scored two goals Martial's done uh, you know, had a good start to the season. Rashford has uh, still scored goals. I don't think he's been brilliant, but he's still scored goals. Um, and our defence, apart from the Palace game where Maguire and Lindelof did cock up for that uh, for that goal, <laughs> generally our defence has been solid. You know, the, the two new signings, Van Bissaka and Maguire. So you can see the Solskjaer is bringing the team forward. Um, the playing style is better. You know, it's better than Mourinho. Again, you know, it's not. 100% every game, but we're not going to be. We're not a perfect side anymore. We are going to drop points. You know, we are going to score four points out of six if we're lucky. If we get four points out of every six, then that means we finish on 76 points and we probably will finish in the Champions League spot. So, you know, four, four points out of six is the aim. Um, you know, we did get four points out of six against Chelsea and Wolves, which is good. OK, 
time we've dropped points against Palace, which means it puts extra pressure on now against Southampton. Um, but yeah, I mean that's just where we are. You know, the expectations have to be lower, unfortunately, because of the team that we've got. You know, it's, it's okay saying we should be better. You know, with Manchester United, we should be higher in the in the league, and we should be winning Palace. And if we play if we play Palace, you know, as a one-off game, then yeah, we should. But on average. Um, on average, we are going to drop points against the lower teams. If we don't, then we'll probably be title contenders, and that's not where we are. So yeah, just thought I'd make that video. Um, you know, let me know what you guys think. He's making mistakes, yes, but as long as he learns from those mistakes, um, that's the main thing, in my opinion. And I think the mistakes that he, are, he is making are easily rectified. Bringing a few subs on earlier, which he did do in, in the Palace match, he brought Greenwood on earlier. Um, and he just needs to learn from some of these small mistakes uh, quite quickly. Uh, and I think the good is still outweighing the bad when it comes to the, t the, the players that he's got rid of. Um, Fellaini, Lukaku, when it looks like Sanchez, out of the whole squad. Um, out, out of the whole club, sorry. Um, and the likes of Smalling, Mata, Matic and Jones not even making uh, you know, the first 11 or even the match day squad. So I think he's moving in the right direction. It's just um, not moving as quick as some of the fans would like. But he just needs to learn from some of these small mistakes. And I think he'll be okay. Okay, uh, that's it for me. Please uh, follow me on Twitter. Um, John Foster, MUFC. J-O-N Foster, MUFC. And uh, I'll catch you soon.